Um, to continue, let me introduce our third speaker, Dr. Cecilia B. Moran, who will speak on her barium and museum collections for biodiversity and ecological research in the Philippines. Dr. Cecilia B. Moran is a faculty member of the Department of Biological Sciences, College of Sciences, and the Graduate School of the University of Santo Tomas. Dr. Moran is the UST College of Science Secretary and Curator of the UST Herbarium. She is also the Vice Chair of the NRCP Biological Science Division 5 and Secretary of the Association of Systematic Biologists of the Philippines. She is a prolific researcher specializing in, in the systematics of Philippine endemic plants and biodiversity conservation. Her work led to the discovery of new plant species belonging to the Rubiaceae and Singeberaceae families. Among her recent and ongoing projects are the assessment, inventory, and biological surveys of flora and fauna in Del Carmen, Siargao Island, funded by the DOST NRCP, and the phase two of the technical assistance for the nomination of the Summer Island Natural Park to the UNESCO World Heritage Site tentative list. Oh, so let us all welcome Dr. Cecilia Moran. So good morning, everyone. Um, first, allow me to greet the uh, UPLB uh, Museum of Natural History. Uh, happy anniversary. And also thank you for inviting me to give a talk on um, Herbarium and Museum Collections for Biodiversity and Ecological Research in the Philippines in celebration of your 45th anniversary. I am uh, Cecilia Moran um, from the University of Santo Tomas and currently also the curator of the University of Santo Tomas Herbario. So um, COVID-19 has changed the way we do almost everything. And for us um, biologists or field researchers, um, it has affected our um, scheduling of field works. And while we continue to live under various um, lockdowns and restrictions, how can we carry out research that ensures a safety of the participants and researchers above all else? And in this presentation, um, uh, I will provide some examples of the uses of museum and herbarium um, collections in biodiversity and ecological research conducted in the Philippines. And as well as how we can strengthen the role of collections of biodiversity knowledge generation in the country. So the importance of uh, museum and herbarium collections is especially great in biodiverse countries such as the Philippines. And museum and herbarium collections are essential foundations for scientific studies. They provide references for identifying the components of our rich biodiversity, as well as serving as collections for many purposes. And uh, as you will see in the next um, slides of my presentations, uh, even if we are affected by the pandemic, and although um, we cannot go onto the field as much as we want, uh, we can still continue our research on biodiversity and ecology using museum and herbarium collections. Now, let me start with my favorite uh, plant, uh, the Philippine Ixoras, and or more commonly known as the Santan. Now, understanding um, species distribution is usually a multi-dimensional uh, problem that involves information about species occurrences, uh, climatic information, and species migration. And um, the primary biodiversity, biodiversity data from collections is uh, often the only data, uh, usually often the data resource to document uh, the presence of species. Now, um, the this primary data, when co combined with environmental data, can be used to model um, species distribution by uh, using an, um, software's numerical tools that identify the environmental factors that are most closely um, associated with the occurrence of the species. Now, the objectives of this study that we um, conducted uh, as part also of my dissertation a few years ago um, 
is to establish a baseline information about the climatic niches of um, Ixora that are endemic to the Philippines. And we wanted to identify suitable areas and potential range shifts um, under future climate conditions. Because given the situation of potentially drastic um, climate change in the Philippines, we pose the question um, how the occurrence of the endemic species of Ixora is related to these bioclimatic conditions and how climate change may affect the um, species distribution of Ixora. Um, in our um, study, locality records or locality data of naturally occurring um, Philippine Ixora were derived from almost 2,000 herbarium specimens and on online databases such as the Coast Digital Flora of the Philippines. Now, this um, study, as I've mentioned, was part of my um, dissertation research. And then uh, I was still lucky to be able to visit um, personally some of the herbaria that holds uh, collections of um, Xtora. And uh, others were loaned from this um, bigger herbaria and was sent to the university where I studied. Now here in the Philippines, it's also possible to request for um, loans of herbarium specimens. We have uh, done that also uh, in the University of Santo Tomas. But if the institution have a very good equipment or uh, uh, digitization of their specimens, uh, instead of them sending the actual specimens to you, they will just send you a high resolution images or they would ask you which specimens you would want to have uh, scanned okay now going back to our study uh, we were able to um, come up with the maps distribution maps of the potential um, suitable habitats of Ixora or endemic Ixora species in the near future and we were able to um, indicate as uh, the species sensitivity to to climate change as predicted by Maxet. Now, here are also other papers that utilize uh, museum and herbarium collections in understanding um, species distribution. In the first paper, um, the authors identified the spatial patterns of the species richness of the regional, at regional scales of tropical insects. Uh, I will not be discussing in details their uh, results and their um, are the findings, but uh, these uh, papers are also um, open access and you may want to um, check in the details of the uh, methods that they employed in these particular papers. Um, the data that uh, they used in this study was taken from museum collections and local taxonomic checklists as well. Uh, in the second paper um, by Pili and his co-authors, co uh, they reconstructed a chronological history of invasion of the six alien frog species in the Philippines. And this um, paper was based on historical and geographical data um, obtained from sources, particularly from natural history collections, and uh, also data that were obtained directly from um, collection managers and curators of both local and international um, institutions or and also through the global biodiversity information facility or the gbif now in the third paper um, the authors model the potential distribution of threatened uh, forest uh, tree species in the philippines um, due to climate change and they also utilize uh, data from herbarium specimens of the uh, three species that they uh, included in their study. Now, um, the most uh, fundamental use of uh, museum and herbarium collections is to support um, taxonomy and systematics, okay? And serving as rep re reference uh, for species description, so meron tayong mga tinatawag na mga type specimens for identification and for naming of species. And one of the most important roles of collection is to preserve the physical specimen um, that serve as um, 
the basis for the formal scientific description of um, new species to science. And also um, existing herbarium collections also house species awaiting description. Now, uh, these are just two examples of um, papers that have ident or described new species of uh, plants from uh, herbarium collections that were um, deposited in um, herbaria abroad. Okay. Now, uh, in the in the paper of uh, Jeb and Sheik, in the course of the, their study of um, previously unseen specimens of Nepenthes in the Philippines, they encountered two collections from um, the herbarium. Uh, Brit Herbarium in Texas um, and came to light this uh, new species Nepenthes summer that was uh, described by the authors based from these two herbarium collections uh, from Brit Herbarium. Now also um, the revision of the genus Bilaria by Dr. Alejandro uh, and his co-authors, they examined uh, more than 300 Herbarium specimens of the genus Villaria uh, deposited from different herbaria. And um, they were able to describe the new species Villaria latensis, which is only um, known from the herbarium sheets of uh, non Villaria species collected uh, from Leyte. Also, in the recent publication of um, Chavez and his co-author, um, he they were able to conduct assessments based on um, observations and examined herbarium materials of Guitardi taxa uh, that are kept uh, both from international and uh, our local herbaria. And aside from these herbarium specimens, they also examined or obtained data from high resolution images and specimens provided by um, international herbaria. And the, um, the type specimens are scanned type specimens stored at JSTOR and other online databases. And in this paper, they were able to describe additional six uh, new species uh, endemic to the Philippines for the genus um, Timonius. Now also collections are the main source for documenting diversity, not only uh, between species, but also within species. Uh, in this study by uh, Dr. Arvin Jesmos and his co-authors in 2015, uh, they provided a comprehensive checklist of Philippine amphibian diversity. And the checklist was created by searching worldwide museum databases for Philippine taxa. Uh, these were also augmented by a thorough review of recently published new species descriptions. Also museum records from 33 museums were obtained um, either through direct uh, contact to the museum uh, websites or um, curators of the um, museums and also through other online databases. In total, they reviewed uh, 43,222 um, specimens um, or specimen records for this particular study and they were able to come up with distribution maps of the um, um, amphibian species in the Philippines. Also the revision of the genus um, Psychotria of the family Rubiaceae by Sommer in Davis in 2007 was based uh, mainly on herbarium specimens uh, comprising of more than 3,000 um, herbarium specimens of the genus Psychotria. Now, uh, this study just shows a uh, majority of uh, specimens in museums and herbarium uh, are not only type specimens, but also regular specimens that are sampled in a certain date and location by one or more collectors. And 
represents a species um, distribution. And also these specimens and their associated information in the specimen label uh, can provide us uh, primary biodiversity data and um, support uh, different types of studies and applications. So yung iba information that we can get from this um, um, label can also be used um, for other studies. So in, in plants, um, some studies can be done on phenology. So utilizing the, the herbarium specimens that have um, reproductive parts and also for uh, animals um, using um, herbarium collection, or rather museum collections, they can um, do morphometrics measurements of the different um, species. Now, um, there's a great value in having a collection, but without a doubt, uh, this, there is also a cost in maintaining a collection. And um, most taxonomic studies will require access to more than one collection. Hindi naman pwedeng uh, yung graduate student ko would only study the collections deposited at the U.S. Terrabario. Uh, he or she needs to have a um, comprehensive um, analysis and it would require uh, comparing uh, collections from also other um, uh, museums or institutions. And finding which collections of specimens that are important or uh, necessary for a specific study might be demanding. And um, digitization of uh, museum collections can do facilitate this task enormously. Um, online data availability is very important to attract um, national and international researchers and especially to use uh, the collections uh, or biodiversity collections in our country. Uh, this is also important to promote international collaboration and raise the capacity to use uh, collections to improve the knowledge of our country's biodiversity. Um, and I'm happy that uh, UP MNH, FLB MNH uh, already started the digitization of their uh, collections. And I hope that other institutions will also um, have um, or will follow also the, uh, or start the digitization of the collections of our uh, herbarium and institutions. For USTH, um, we will also or we also plan to start the the digitization and uh, before the pandemic, uh, we were uh, lucky to be funded with uh, the object scan, and uh, we we plan to to start slowly scanning also all the uh, the thousands uh, or more than uh, thirty thousand herbarium collections deposited at the USDH. So hopefully there will be more venue for herbarium and museum uh, curators to meet, such as this one that was held or organized by the UPLB MNH, uh, Young Clades in 2000, the first Clades uh, seminar workshop in 2017. I, I, th I think there's also the second one in 2018. And I'm not sure if there, uh, there are already a uh, um, planned uh, continuation of uh, the, the symposium of this seminar workshop. So a network of experts is essential to support the strengthening of the role of collections in biodiversity knowledge generation in the country, in the Philippines in particular. And uh, the network of um, contacts should be also um, include uh, many more, uh, Biologi uh, biological group or experts in other biological groups and be strongly tied to cooperation or activities like training, uh, study programs and projects, collaborative projects focused in biodiversity. Maybe a society of Philippine curators or herbarium and museum curators in the Philippines is to be established in the near future. Uh, also a uh, more collaborative project um, the, the, the figure shown below is uh, a proposal, uh, a planned a collaborative project of 
um, um, curators in different herbarias in the Philippines. And projects like this aimed at understanding um, the collections and establishing uh, information accumulation system or a database of our plant and animal biodiversity. Now also, um, it is hoped that our administrators or officials of private institutions with uh, museums and herbarium, as well as government funding agencies, um, the, they should, uh, that they also see the importance of uh, museums in Herbaria and put uh, a lot of funds that can be used to establish scientific infrastructures uh, in the country that will help in digitization and mobilization of our existing um, herbarium and museum collections. Because Philippine museums and Herbaria as mentioned by also by other speakers co uh, could reach out more aggressively and expose our younger researchers and students to collections-based research and the incorporation of digital data in biodiversity science and the potential for opportunities for research and data analysis will surely grow in the country. And museum and herbarium collections are restoring the paramount role in the study of, the bi of biodiversity in our country. And Many specimens have been kept hidden in the collections for decades. Uh, yung iba, hindi pa nakamount, nakabox pa yung iba, naka, nakaipit pa sa mga dyaryo yung iba, uh, yung iba sama-sama pa sa isang bote ng puno ng formalin. And these collections may have or may, it's within these collections, you may be able to discover new species uh, or, uh, of plants or animals. And so uh, collection does represent uh, an important asset by preserving the known and the unknown biodiversity of our country, especially if we will be able to combine these collections with new approach, approaches and analysis uh, and providing access to biodiversity information to the general public, not only to our students and to, to researchers. So with that, um, I would like to thank everyone for listening. And once again, thank you very much uh, and happy 45th anniversary to the UPLB Museum of Natural History. <laughs>